Hi, everyone. Anthony Morganti here. Did you know that you could use AI to critique your photos and you could use AI to give you suggestions on how you can improve those photos? I didn't know you could do this until recently I read an article on it. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to that article. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, I'm not going to bury the lead. I really don't care for this. And I'll explain why along the way. And you can let me know in the comment section whether or not this is something you would use. Now, the AI we're going to be using to critique our photos is ChatGPT. Uh, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. It is free to use. They do have a paid tier, but I don't pay for it. So what I'm going to be showing you in this video, you can do with the free version of ChatGPT. I want them to take this image, but actually not exactly this image. This is the raw file of an image I took at Forest Lawn Cemetery. You can see that I did some basic adjustments to it. I used the eraser tool and I removed a car that was right here and another car that was over here. And then I straightened it a tiny bit because it was a little bit crooked. And that is really all I've done to it. But this isn't the version of the image that I want ChatGPT to critique. After I did this editing in Lightroom, I sent it to On One Photo Effects and I converted it to black and white. So I want ChatGPT to critique this photo. So what we need to do first is after we have our image edited is we need to export it from Lightroom. So I'm going to bring up the export dialog and I already have this set up. I'm going to export it. I'm going to call it critique. I'm going to export it to my desktop. I JPEG at 100% quality and uh, sRGB color space. And I'm not going to export the full resolution image. I'm going to resize it so that the long side is 2000 pixels and I'm going to include my copyright information only. So I'm going to export this image to my desktop. And once it's exported, we'll go over to ChatGPT. And what you need to do is you go down to the bottom here where you could like ask ChatGPT to do something, but we're going to click this little paper clip. When we click on that, you'll have the option to upload from your computer. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to take this image that's on my desktop, and I'm going to upload it. Now, it's just going to sit there when it uploads because you have to tell Chat GPT what you want to do with it. So I'm going to ask Chat GPT, is this photo any good? And then I'm going to say, what can I do to improve it? Okay, that's all I'm going to do. So is this photo any good? What can I do to improve it? And I'm going to then click the little up arrow to upload it. Now, once it's uploaded, ChatGPT supposedly is examining the image and that's going to spit out a response. And you can see here that it says my photo has a serene and tranquil atmosphere with a clear focus on the central statue in the middle of the pond. Here are some thoughts and suggestions for improvement. Then it gives me some strengths. Composition, the placement of the statue at the center of the image draws the viewer attention and creates a strong focal point. Contrast, the black and white conversion enhances the contrast between the different elements, such as the trees, water, and sky. Mood, the overall mood is peaceful and reflective, which is well captured in the monochromatic scheme. Then it says areas for improvement. Depth and texture, adding more texture and depth to the image can make it more engaging. This can be achieved playing with different lighting conditions or using post-processing techniques. It doesn't tell me exactly what, though. It just kind of gives me a general idea. Then it says foreground is interest. The foreground is quite empty, and yeah, it is. There's nothing in the foreground. I'm just focusing on the statue. Uh, so it says um, clues some elements of, like leaves or branches in the foreground could add more depth and interest. Now, obviously, I well, I could do that in post, right? I could do something with Turner to fill in Photoshop and add that, but I'm not going to. But that's giving me some ideas of what I could do to make the image, quote, better. Leading lines. Incorporating leading lines that the guide the viewer's eye towards the statue. Well, obviously, I can't do that in post either. But that's something I could keep in mind for the future. Then it says details and shadows and highlights. Make sure the shadows and highlights retain enough detail. Sometimes black and white images can lose detail in this area. So adjusting exposure and contrast could help. Now, I could tell you wholeheartedly uh, that there is detail in the shadows and highlights of my image. 
So what it's doing here, and this is part of the reason why I don't care for this, it's just kind of giving you photography 101 suggestions, uh, stuff that if you uh, belong to a, a good, healthy a Facebook group that will give you uh, honest critiques on your images without trolling you, uh, you could get the same thing. Um, if you engage or hire someone uh, to critique your portfolio, you could get the same thing and more. So this is real general. You know, so it's going on the sky and clouds are important elements in the composition and the texture and details in the clouds could add more whatever. So now it has the post-processing tips. Now this is what I actually could do to this image. Dodging and burning. Use dodging and burning techniques to enhance the highlights and shadows, adding more depth to the image. Now I really have the highlights kind of peaked out, I think, where just before clipping, and I am clipping a bit of the shadows because that's the way I tend to like to edit. So I'm not sure what else I could do there to make the clouds stand out more without clipping the clouds a little bit or even crushing the shadows more to make the you know contrast higher. And it's next one, number two is contrast adjustment. Fine-tune the contrast to ensure the image is not too flat or overly harsh. Sharpening it, apply some sharpening to enhance the details. All right. Noise reduction, there's no noise. So it's again, it's just giving you kind of general things. It looks like it looked at my image, it saw what the image was of a little statue in the middle of a pond, and it's in black and white. But beyond that, I don't think it really examined my editing that closely. It's kind of given me these general things I could do uh, to create a good composition in general, not necessarily improve this specific composition. Because then it goes on talking about rule of thirds and cropping, tighter crop, why you know stuff like that initial adjustments, um, exposure, contrast, clarity. So real general stuff. So kind of getting the idea of what they're telling me here, let me see if I could, quote, improve this. So I'm going to go to my image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it tighter uh, on the subject. So we're um, making the subject a little more tighter. I can't do leading lines because I you know, obviously can't do that in post. But we'll make it a tighter crop. And then what I'll do is I want to put more emphasis on the statue itself. So I think we'll get a uh, mask. And I'm going to mask the subject. And it has masked the subject good enough. And we're going to add some texture and clarity. Those of you that watch my videos know when I talk about some things about composition is when someone looks at an image, they'll tend to look at the brighter parts of the image first. And then they tend to look at the sharpest parts as well. So they'll kind of ignore the darker parts of the image and or parts that are blurry. So I want to make sure that the subject of this image is very sharp. And I'm going to go to tone and maybe even brighten it up a tiny bit. So it's a little brighter. Then I think I will even take this a step further. Uh, since it mentioned leading lines, and I really can't do that here, I'm going to put more emphasis on the statue itself. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get a radial gradient mask, and we're going to put it over the statue itself. I'll pull it up like this. And here with this mask, I just want to make the middle brighter. So I'm making the middle brighter. Then I want to do is I want to go where it says mask 2 and click on these three dots, and I want to duplicate and invert this mask. So now I've added another, a second radial gradient, but this one is inverted. So whatever adjustment I do will affect the outside areas. So I'll go to exposure here and I'm going to take exposure down. So I'm now trying to put more emphasis on the statue. Now I'm done with masking. What I am going to do though is I am going to go to effects. I'm even going to add another vignette just so it's a little darker on the edges. So I'm pushing everyone's attention more towards the statue. So this is an edit I typically wouldn't do, but this is an edit that I've seen a lot of photographers do, shoot black and white. They tend to have this real kind of contrasty black and white and uh, kind of a lot of dodging and burning where they're really trying to put uh, the viewer's attention on something specific in the scene. So that's what I've done here pretty much is by putting these um, heavy vignetting masks on the image I've made it so that the statue stands out even more. So I'm going to 
um, export this. I'm just going to change it from critique dash one to critique dash two, and I'll export this. Now I'll go back to ChatGPT and I'll click this little uh, paper clip. We'll upload from computer. I'll go to critique two and I'll upload this. And I'll type down here is this version of the image any better? All right, and then we'll click the little up arrow and we'll see what ChatGPT has to say about this. And you can see it's thinking and now it says the second version of your photo shows noticeable improvements. Here are some observations and further suggestions. Enhanced depth and contrast. The adjustments you made have given the image more depth and contrast, making the statue stand out more prominently against the background. That's obviously what I was trying to do. Sky clouds. The sky appears more dramatic with better defined clouds. I really didn't do anything with the clouds. I just cropped the image. So where it's coming up with that, I'm not sure. Details and shadows and highlights. There's better detail in both the shadow and highlight areas, providing a richer tonal range. Now, all I did was add those three masks. The one mask was on the uh, subject itself, where I just made it slightly brighter, and I uh, brought up texture and, I think, clarity a little bit. And then I put those two radial gradients on it. Uh, so, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then... Further suggestions, uh, foreground interest. It's still telling me to do something with foreground, leading lines, cropping. I mean, this is Photography 101. Dodging and burning again. Uh, add subtle dodging and burning to areas around the statue. Um, kind of did that already. Uh, vignette effect, I did that. Um, texture and clarity. They want me to further enhance the texture and clarity of the overall forehead foliage. I really don't want to do that. I mean, it's really overly sharp, if anything, right? So I really don't want to do that. Um, so it's going on and on and telling me different things I could try. Uh, I don't know. Should I, uh, let's try because you never know. So let's do a third one. Um, it's telling me to maybe enhance the vignette. Why don't we enhance the vignette? So we're making it kind of a lot more low key. Let's do a mask, um, for the sky. So I'm going to create a new mask. And we'll select the sky and it's talking about, you know, contrast. So here we'll go to, the, we'll make the whiter parts of the sky whiter and the blacker parts blacker. So we're making this like overly dramatic sky. This is something I typically wouldn't do. And let's go to over our overall sharpness because it mentioned uh, that as well. And we'll just add some overall sharpening uh, to the image. So we've made it even more dramatic and we'll export this and we'll go to start number three now. All right. So we'll export that and we'll do it one more time. The little paper clip. Um, I tried this actually two days ago and uh, with the free version, it limits you to three uploads within a 24 hour period. So I won't be able to do this a fourth time. Yeah. So we'll do it up here because I don't have the paid version. So, okay. I'm going to write, is the image better now? All right. And we'll upload that. And we'll see what chat GPT has to say about this image. Now, your latest version of the image shows further improvements. Here's a detailed look at improvements. So again, it's going to tell me the same things. It's telling me about the enhanced depth. I because of what I did with the clouds and, you know, added that kind of brightness up there. Um, further suggestion, it's still talking about texture and clarity. It's talking about rule of thirds again and stuff um, and so on. Uh, overall, it's telling me summary, the image has greatly improved and whatever. Now, there was, when I did this before, and why I did this the third time, and it's not doing it now, and I'm not sure how I could force it to do it, it asked me if I wanted it to edit my image. And it came up with its own edit, and it allowed me to download it, and it was on a different image, and it was horrible. It was, like, so overly sharpened, and there was haloing around trees. It, it was it was really bad. I mean, really bad. Now, I'm not sure how I could... um 
force it to do that. Um, maybe I could ask it, can you edit the image for me? Let's see if it does it. All right. Oops, got to put a question mark there. All right. And let's see if it does it. Now, I mentioned I did this like, uh, I think, two days ago, actually. And it offered to edit the image for me, whereas in this case, it didn't offer the edit to me. Um, but it's analyzing, so maybe it is doing it. But um, my main gist here is this is something I just, I really don't care for. Um, if we all use this, we're all going to be editing our images the same exact way. And part of the joy of photography is, um, now it's not doing it. It's just sitting there. Oh, I have edited. Okay, here I can download the edited image. Yay. So it did it. Okay, so it's it downloading the file. And let's take a look at it, all right? But I started to say part of the joy of photography is us interpreting a scene as artists in our own way. So I could photograph this one way. You could stand in the same exact spot as I do and photograph it a different way. You'd probably frame it a little different. You'd um, definitely probably edit it in post different than I would. And that's part of what makes the photography ours, right? So here is our downloaded image from them. And let's take a look at it. So this is their version of the image. Uh, you could see this is like I'm looking through a, a sewer pipe or something. And if I zoom in, I'm not sure how to zoom in on. You can see it's like really, really sharp. There's haloing around the trees. Um, it's really not, in my opinion, very good. Um, so that's why I guess I really don't care uh, for this. And again, in the description of this video, I have a link to that article. I actually just skimmed that article. I didn't read it um, like very like intently. So I'm not sure if the author of the article really likes this either or whether or not they don't like it or whether they were more in the middle. But um, I really don't care for it. And you could let me know in the comments your opinion whether or not this is something you think is, is good. Now, obviously, they're going to improve this down the line. Let's say they do improve it. Um, is it something you use? Now, something I didn't try, and like I mentioned, I, I don't think I could do this anymore. They limit you with the free version. But maybe I could tell chat gpt my style this is my style and i want this image to like reflect my style what can i do and then i could upload the image maybe that's something you could try to do and maybe that would help but if you know your style why do you need to ask chat gpt how to do it i guess but that's it for this video thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it talk to you guys soon